The new 1041 The Beat, heavy hitter DJ, New Era. New Era TV, I'm sitting here with Rhapsody. What's, What's up, going bro? on, babe? I'm good. I'm up, I'm up in Alabama. <laughs> you, I finally met you because, yes. like I said, you told me you tweet me a lot. I see it. I see your name all the time. A lot. Yeah, huge, huge supporter, here. man. I, man. Huge hip -hop, supporter. Hip -hop, hip hop lives, man. DJs are the cornerstone of hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> so what you got going tonight? What's up with tonight? Me, I'm on a uh, from the south with from the south with love tour with Big Crit and Damani Harris. Um, so you know we got to stop tonight. Uh, where we at tonight? Who? Iron City. Iron City. Iron City. So That's how you know she Alabama. worked. She forgot where she was at. Yeah, bro. <laughs> at a, the last couple of joints, I think I was in Nashville last night. I yelled out Asheville. And I was in Asheville. I yelled out North of Virginia. <laughs> Yo, I be like, I keep it funky. I just be like, I'm sorry. So you got <laughs> so to get some of that barbecue while you're here now. Everybody been telling me about the barbecues. You gotta put me onto the spot because I don't want to go to the wrong. I like that. I'm a foodie. I don't want to go to the wrong spot. I want to have you having the bubble guts on stage. Nah, I don't tonight. need that either. So <laughs> it's, it's about two o'clock, three o'clock. Now I got to get it right the now. D, the DJ might be up there rapping yeah, your words. Yo. Better get about five <laughs> hours to get right. <laughs> Rhapsody is here, people. Brand new album just dropped. But uh, I'm gonna take it back to what really gravitated me to you mm -hmm. as an artist. I'm. Uh, I came up with on mixtapes, so right. DJ Drama is what really led me to you. Because anything mm -hmm. drama touches, I go behind and be like, okay, let me see what this is. Right. And from the beginning track, then I looked at the track with Raekwon, and then you had a track with um Raheem. You call is it, is it Raheem Devine? Raheem Devine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. caught up. Mm -hmm. Yo, spoke so much to me, yo. Oh, thank you. So bro. much to me. So. When I heard that, I got on, on Twitter and just looked you up. And I was just writing like, yo, rap, rap. I need drops. I need drops. I need mm -hmm. drops. And then I think somebody replied and was like, I got you. And when you sent it to me, I was like, yo, she going to forever have my support. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm big on that. So let's talk about what inspires you to actually like write music. What are some of your key things that you actually look forward to when you write? What brings out the music in you, the best of you? What brings out the best of me? Right. Uh, just music that's honest, telling the story. Um, whether it's my story or, you know, a story of the streets mm -hmm. and people, it's, it's just doing something creative that's going to touch and inspire people. Right. I know how music used to make me feel, so I like I like having the ability to creatively play with words. Like, that's a challenge to me. And Metaphors. In a creative way. Right. At the same time, tell a real story that touch people. Like, you know, you, like, go on these tours and you meet people and they're like, your song made me feel this way or, it, you know, it inspired me to do this or, you know, that's that's what I get from it. So you know, the creative part, but also the human part. The human part, Touch you know, mm -hmm. rhapsody. So who actually inspires you? Like who are some artists that that you actually look up to? Um, artist wise, mm -hmm. I, I, I draw inspiration from a lot of people in different places. But artist wise, uh, Jay Z and Lauren Hill are probably my biggest influences mm -hmm. still to this day. Um, I draw inspiration from my peers, like Kendrick Lamar pushes mm -hmm. me, Crit pushes me. A lot, um, you know, still sharp and still. So I always look to them when they drop music that like inspire me and push me to be even better. And they they never disappoint. Um, I'm inspired by like Cicely Tyson too and Felicia Rashad, even outside of just music, like just people that do art or do whatever they do well. Kobe Bryant like right. motivates me about work ethic and loving right. the game that you in. Um, my game happens to be hip hop. Uh, you know. You ever played sports before? Yeah, I, I grew up playing basketball. Okay, where about? Yeah. Where about? Yeah. You talking about like what city? Yeah, college, oh, North college. Carolina. I ain't playing college. You ain't play college ball? Yeah, slow, slow down. Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> I got a, I got an offer from one college. It was Meredith in Raleigh, but it was an all girls school, and I. Yeah, you want mess with it? I ain't want to go to all girls school, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go with some bed with that. <laughs> So I went to NC State. Um, I played club ball for like two years, mm. and I, I actually had a, I had talked to Coach K. Yow before she passed about walking on, and uh, she was like, "Come to my office," and I ain't never go. Why not? I don't know. So hip hop basically is what you really knew you wanted to do. Basically, I think so. the okay, universe so. knew it. Somebody knew it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so how did you meet Night Wonder? Like, how did that come about? 
I met Knife through um, some friends while I was in college. We started a hip hop organization, and you know we used to do like free shows, do some rap battles, like you know. And one summer we got together and we did a mixtape. <clears throat> and at the time, like I, I wasn't doing nothing but hosting. Everybody else was rapping, producing. Right. So we had shows. I would just be the host. Um, and but behind the scenes, I was just always writing. It started out as poetry. Then I got into rhyming, and, and my best friend at the time. Charlie Smarts, uh, he got me in the booth. So I had written and recorded my first two songs. And one of the guys in the group was shadowing Knife, learning how to make beats on Fruity Loop. So he invited Knife to come by, meet everybody, listen to the music. Knife pulled up, like at the crib, it. like at the house. Right. Just pulled up. It was like 20 of us. Um, listened to the songs. That's how I met him. Like, you heard my first two songs, and he saw something. And kind of took me on his wing, yeah. Dope, dope, man. I like hearing inspiring stories like mm -hmm. that, man. Opportunity is just, it's there. You got to get out there and take it, man. Yeah, you and, get and, out you know, there build relationships it. and move around and network and travel and shake hands. You know, that's kind of how I was brought up in the DJing business. Mm -hmm. uh, how did the uh, Rock Nation signing come about? Like, how did that happen? That came after that Kendrick Lamar feature. Um, so being on To Pimp a Butterfly just put me on a whole new platform mm -hmm. um, and made people listen. They, they wanted to hear that album, so they have nothing but a choice but to listen to that verse. Um, you know, and so many good things came from that. Um, you know, people love the verse, for one. Um, I got a Dr. Dre co-sign off of it. Oh. It's just things started rolling. Um, and I got my first Grammy nomination because, you know, his album was nominated uh, for Album of the Year, Rap Album of the Year. Um, so after that, we got an email um, <coughs> from Rock Nation saying, you know, that they were interested. And, you know, Jay, again, my biggest influence is if I if I signed with anybody, I knew that was where I wanted to go. Right. We, myself, Nine Jammer, we wanted to partner with, so we took the meeting, and it just made sense. It mm. felt natural. Um, I walked in, and half of his staff are women. Um, it's super diverse. They, they approached it where it's like, what do y'all want to do? Not mm. what we want y'all to do, because I came in at the time I was working on Layla's Wisdom, and we came in the building with the album 70, 80% done. They didn't ask to hear a single track. It was just like, whatever you want. We don't ever want to stifle your creativity. How can we help? And, yeah, you know, it was the deal was sealed after that. So. Dang, rest is history, man. I've been, at, I've been knocking at Rock Nation for a minute as a, you know, for some management over there. Yeah. And <laughs> they keep telling me you got to put in some more work, Eric, because uh, my guy, DJ Camelo, a heavy hitter, is, uh, is managed by them. Mm -hmm. So um, let me see. You got sweetness over there. You got uh, what's her name? I can't think of her name right now. Pooh, Jazzy Pooh, Jazzy Poe. My center right. She's over at Title. Oh, so okay, she has yeah. her hand over there a lot. So I got relationships over there. So I'm just gonna keep on keep on grinding, man. So hey, that's what it's all about. The marathon for sure. Exactly. So how was it like working with Kendrick Lamar though? Like how was that like? Oh, that's dope. We haven't worked together in the same space mm -hmm. since we did since he did a. What, what year was that? Um, he was on my, my, I think it was, let me think. I, I think it was 2011, 2012. Between 2011, 2013. It was somewhere. <laughs> I can't even remember the time anymore. But um, th that was the last time we worked together in the same space. He came to North Carolina because he, uh, he was performing at North Carolina Central. So mm -hmm. he flew, flew, came by the studio. Um, and, I mean, it's just natural, like, I mean, we we, we MC to put right. the beat on, like, bro, what you want to rap to? He don't care. I ain't care at the time. I wasn't I wasn't in the process of really making songs. I was still trying to prove myself as an MC, so mm. we just spit bars. Um, but, you know, we worked together twice after that. He did a verse for me on uh, Power, on yeah. Layla's Wisdom. I did one for him on Complexion. Mm. But, you know, it's just easy, like, when we did Complexion, He's so secretive about he, what he's working on. Mm. Um, he he just sent the beat because you know his what he rapped on is different than what from what I rapped on. Right. So he just sent my part. He called me. He told me the concept. We ain't stay on the phone long at all. So I was just like, I got it. You ain't gotta you ain't, you ain't gotta go deep with me. I got it. I got the complexion. I got it. Um, so I mean, it's just easy though. Like I think we both respect each other so much as artists. We get each other. Uh, you know. We text a lot more than anything. So basically, yeah. so it's like good friends. Good, it's a, it's a yeah. good business relationship. Basically. Yeah, like if he if he got something he hear me on, he'll hit me. Like same 
me if I hit him, whether he do it or not. Like, you know, he's always been supportive, though. Right. That's what I appreciate. He's always honest. I could always send him music like, bro, what you think about this? Or, yo, this happened. How did you handle it? Mm. Or because he's he's excelled so much faster, so he's done and seen a lot of things. So I always hit him for advice. Um, other than that, we joking about some shit that happened <laughs> in the industry all the time. So That's what's yeah. up. So after you was nominated for like the Grammys, did a lot of artists come at you for like features and stuff, or did that happen before? Nah, not a lot. Um, <clears throat> there were some people that that validated me, you know. So they, even if they didn't reach out for a verse, they re- at least reach out to acknowledge that it happened when they may not have done that before. Um, you know, so that's what it is. It's just one thing I learned that people are always watching. Mm. You think they not? That's true. They are always watching, so yeah. you know. Um, but I, I have done some features with artists, you know, that the Grammys and and other things have. Are the records out helped. yet, or they haven't been released yet? The features. Mm, I think, yeah, I think everything is out. I can't think of anything I got in the can right now. I'm waiting on a Cardi B record. Oh, there's yes. one. There's one that's coming. It's not because of, because I did the Grammys though, like. Uh, but there's one that's coming. I think it's coming sometime this year. But yeah, who's on it? Like who's whose song is it? Oh, I can't say that. <laughs> that's not. That's not. It ain't my song, so I don't know people roll out like. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I so, let them do that. <laughs> <laughs> the album, uh, Layla's Wisdom. Am I saying that right? Mm-hmm. Who was it? Um, named after. Um... Uh, that was named after my maternal grandmother. My mom, okay, my so mom. what made you name it that? Um, it was just something. A, a quote that she inspired me. She used to say all the time, <clears throat> give people their flowers while they're here. Mm. Um, and I just had to think about what that meant for me as an artist to get back to the culture and for me to receive that I felt like I didn't receive. Mm. I don't receive enough. Got you know, ask yourself, do you even care? Like, what motivates you? What's your driving force? Like, to keep, you know, what's the bigger picture? So that was it. So free spirited, man. Mm. I'm, I'm actually comfortable with doing this interview. Most artists come in here and just don't really know how to engage. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of like with you, it's just like I'm just, I feel more relaxed, man. Oh, we kicking it. Yeah, I'm regular. Exactly, man. <laughs> All right, so fast forward. <laughs> two years later, you dropped the album Eve. Um, how'd you come up with the name for the album? Queen Latifah actually kind of sparked me to, I had it, we had a different title that Ninth Wonder had came up with. Um, <clears throat> and after, you know, I did the songs, I named every song after the influential black woman and I played it for mm. Queen Latifah and you know, she loved the record. She was like, what's the album title? And I mm. told her the one we had, and she was like, hmm. You know, so she's like, I think you need something that's more powerful that really speaks to this concept that you have. Mm. So, you know, Queen Latifah give you that advice. You don't, you don't pass over. Of it course when not. Give you something. So I went home and I, I'm old over it and I came up with Eve, um, which is the first uh, living woman, mm-hmm. of course, Adam and Eve, but Eve, and you know, that to me spoke to women, to black women, to you know, the vessels in which all of us come through. Um, and I thought that was the perfect title because I couldn't, I didn't want to name it after myself. I couldn't think of one woman that represented all oh, these different women. powerful women. Yes, There's only yes, one, yes, it's, yes. it's Eve. That's what's up. So you dropped the first single. And I was shocked when I saw D'Angelo. I was too. Like I'm, I didn't even did that even like. Was you actually in the studio with him? Hell he... no, <laughs> <laughs> D'Angelo ain't coming outside for me. So how did that you happen know? though? Um, we was it that boy on the real like that's the universe like things align how they supposed to align. Um, we was just in the studio one day mixing and I was waiting on a verse from Jizza. Um. And we got the call from his management just trying to align, like, when he could get in the studio. Because at the time, you know, the, the Wu-Tang documentary is out. Mm-hmm. The series is about to come out. Mm-hmm. They're doing shows and a mad press. So we just trying to work schedules. I got deadlines that I'm forever missing over the summer. Um, <laughs> so uh, his manager, after that conversation of how we were going to work that, he's like, you know, I work with D'Angelo, too. He's a big fan of you. He's a big fan of Knife Wonder. I think it'd be dope if y'all do something together. Right. Like, that's just how it happened. And I was just like, bet. So when you heard it, what was your expression like when you actually heard the hook he laid on it? How did that make you feel? I I don't know how, still how I feel. I don't even know if it's real. Like, that's what's up. I can't, I can't describe what that feel. It's just, you just got to feel it because 
of how great he is. Like mm-hmm. for my generation, he's Prince to us. He's Michael Jackson. That's D'Angelo, like one of the greatest musical genius unicorns to ever walk this planet of Earth. And he hadn't done a feature for a rap artist since Common So Far Gone. I think that was like two thousand six, five. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the yeah. album you got. You got some bangers on there. And, um, mm-hmm. what's, I can't pronounce. I don't want to say the girl's name wrong, but she always has a mask on her face. So. Oh, look, Kaylee, 47. Talking about the Yo, Oprah record. That's a dope record. Yeah, so, that's a dope joint. Whoopi's a dope joint. Um, dollar, it's, it's dollar, just, dollar, dollar bill. Yeah, I like that. Just the process of, of figuring out, like, how do you roll an album out? What's the first single? Because, one, I'm not a radio. I'm not a a radio artist. I don't I don't necessarily play the radio game. I don't make songs for the radio, radio. but I have songs that would fit on the radio that mm. I, you know, depending on the project. So for me it was it's always like how do I I want to roll it out. At first I wanted to put out Nina first just just because of what the record meant and it's just like a call to attention and it kind of prepares you for the the idea of the record um so we played around with that, but every every time I went in the studio, and whether it be like my Universal people, Rock Nation people, Jamla people, or just Busta Rhymes, I'm gonna tell you, Busta, Busta. Busta the one that really did it because, you know, we had Universal people. They were here, Eve Tahaj. They'd be like, "That's the one you should probably go with." Life was like, "I think we should go with Eve Tahaj." I'm like, "I think we should wait and do that like third, because I don't wanna, I don't wanna bring out D'Angelo right out the gate. Right. I'm gonna work into it." We went and played it for Buster. Buster turned around, looked at me. He was like, Queen, if this ain't the first song that you come out with, me and you ain't friends no more. I bet the energy was at yeah, all time Yeah, high. he told me that. I was like, all right, then, well, we just got to be first. Is there a Buster record in the works? And, like, do y'all have one? I mean, we worked together on Layla's Wisdom, but it's Buster, Buster is, that's big bro. Like, honestly, I could say anytime I need something from him, I could call him and I know he'll do it. Mm. That's like just how much love he got for me, but it just depends on the record. I don't, I don't force things. Mm. I don't, I don't go like, oh, I, I want a song. Let's just put Busta on it because it's Busta. The song has to feel like Busta. Got you. Or Busta got to hear the record, be like, I want to get on it, and I'll be like, all right, because whatever, whatever you want to do, like, just do it. Do your thing. So yeah. you know, I th- that's always a possibility. But so, how was it like working with? Uh, you work with Raekwon too, right? Yeah. And Jizzle. How, so how is it actually working with the Wu-Tang Clan members? Uh, it's dope. Um, how do you say the name of the single again? Because I don't want to pronounce it. Hitahaj. Okay, so in the video, you displayed um, the Muslim woman mm-hmm. throughout it. So how did that concept come about? What made you go with that look well, for the video? Uh, Iftahaj Muhammad is the first Muslim American athlete to perform in the Olympics wearing a hijab. Mm. So if this, I wanted, I wanted the reason and the person that I named the song after to be portrayed and what she means to the Muslim community and, and you know, just how she shows uh, their beauty and their confidence and, you know, just un- unwavering fearlessness. So, you know, I wanted to make sure I, out of respect for her that I show respect to the Muslim women in the community. Oh. And that's why, you know, we made that a big part of the video. You had some uh, some powerful women in there. Uh, Artist wise, uh, I think I saw Mary J. Blige in the yeah, video. Yeah, Mary, Roxanne, Shantae. Oh, dope, mm-hmm. dope, 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 dope. And uh, how did the hook come about? Came up with the way. <laughs> like, who, whose idea was that? Man, this before Jizza got on it, I I was just like, I, cause I wasn't expecting. It was, I thought it was just gonna be me and, me and Jizza. So I'm just in the studio, just trying to build a build a goddamn blank with a hook. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I just started singing it. It was more like a freestyle joint. It just felt right, so I, I just laid it down. And um, when Jizz was gonna get on, I mean, when D'Angelo was gonna get on, I thought he was going. I thought I was gonna scrap that. He was gonna sing something totally new. Right. But he actually ended up re-singing what I wrote, which I thought was crazy, and yep. incorporating what was in Liquid Swords already. It don't even sound um, like him. Yeah. It doesn't. That's crazy. Like. And then, then and Ninth Wonder flipped the beat and remade it. Mm-hmm. Dope, man. Right, like dope. That. So how is it actually? How much for a Ninth Wonder beat? You know. It depends on what level of artistry you're at. You know, <laughs> you're an A-list artist, artist, it might be a little high. You got the price levels. But an A-list, the indie artist, whoop de whoop. I think it started at 20, though. But I don't know. For indie. 20. I don't, I don't know, don't bro. Quote, yeah. I ain't got that issue. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I God. I hope not. <laughs> Thank God. All right. Nah, I don't know. 
So I got a list of uh, some of my favorite songs off of some of your projects. Mm-hmm. And uh, a couple of uh, lines, I hope you remember, because, you know, you, you actually write all your stuff. You do. Oh, without a doubt. So, okay, so the album Beauty and the Beast. Oh, wow, boy, you going back in the day. Yo, I did my homework, yo, like, I'm telling you. I might you, remember it, I might not. So All right, so it's, it's real simple. So the song Coming For You, uh-huh. uh, Nas said you had a blessed flow. Remember mm-hmm. that line? Yeah. So how was it actually talking to Nas? Like, it was how was chill. that conversation? We was uh, we was in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, at the uh, what's the festival they have out there? The big one, Sound Set. That Sound Set, and um, we was just back in the, in the artist trailers, just kicking it. Uh, so we sat by his trailer, and uh, I can't remember what I played him, but I was working on was working on something, and I played it for him, and he was just like, "Yo." You blessed, like you ill, like mm. in the Nas voice. Um, but other than that, he was chill. We talked about North Carolina because he got family from there. He's been down there a lot. So Nas just, he was just cool, like so, half half moon part fade, cool Nas. Mm. You know? So, all right, so let's go to the, the mixtape, She Got Game. Okay. The song uh, Caught Up. Okay. Uh, More Fuel for the Fire, I Ain't Forgetting Ish, Forgetting Mine with Crit. Get in mind with crit Def Jam blocking. Don't matter much to me forever. I stay rocking. <laughs> what does that line mean right there? I think. Let me think. Say it loud again. All right. More fuel happened. for the fire. I ain't forgetting ish. Get in mind with crit Def Jam blocking. Don't matter much to me forever. I stay rocking. I think. I think at that time, I don't think it was nothing to do with crit per se. Um, Def Jam me and crit blocking. was probably doing a song at that time. But we were we had a meeting with Def Jam early on. Uh, they were supposed to sign Jamla uh, to as a label deal. Um, and that's like an indie label, like Jamla Records. Jam, yeah. Jamla Records is the is the indie label that Knife Wonder on. Okay, okay. Um, <clears throat> so we got five six artists on on Jamla Records. Uh, but at that time we were working on an indie deal with Def Jam, and I felt like we were so close, like we had paperwork and everything. And for whatever reason, I can't remember why it fell through. I don't retain things like that. Like, I only retain positive, positivity. Gotta block that <laughs> negative stuff out. So man. I don't even remember why, but that was supposed to happen at one time, and it didn't happen. And I'm thankful it didn't. Because mm. I'm, I'm happy the path that we had, and we ended up with Rock Nation. Dope. But but Def Jam, we still work with Def Jam because they distribute, distribute my music. So... Mm. It it comes full circle in the way it's supposed to. It always to. comes back though. Yeah. It and, always comes back. Yeah. And I got a, a lot a lot of dope people at Def Jam holding us down. So All right, so Layla's Wisdom, the song Power. All right. This this line stood out. The night I got a chain from Mr. Flowers. Mm-hmm. I gave it back when I got done rapping. The same, the same hour. hour. I ain't five percent less we talking to top MCs and I'm the top of that. The rest beneath me are cowards. Mm-hmm. When it spits when it spits, look around. It's Medial. metaphor showers. Medial. I watch the stars fall, fall, fall. Yeah, that's what you call power. So what? Is, so what does that mean? Uh, we were doing a Jay Dilla uh, festival in Miami that year, and I was on stage rapping, and out of nowhere, Jay Electronica comes up on stage, and you know he he stops. You know he makes his spill. He's like, "This is the greatest female rapper since Lauryn Hill," and says all these things, and he takes off. There's a there's a, a chain um, that he's wearing a five percent of chain that Jay Z had gave him. Um, Jay Z gave it to him at the Brooklyn Hip Hop Festival Man, I wish I the summer that, before. Yeah. So I I know the chain. He takes it off and he puts it on my head and I'm like, hold on, bro. I ain't five percent for one. And this the chain Jay gave you. What you doing right, right. now? But you know, um, I, I couldn't like, you know. You, I just I just rock with it. I thanked him when I got off stage. I made sure I gave it back because one, I'm not five percent, and you can't be rocking that if you ain't of the claw. Mm. And two, I knew that he was a little bit, and he really mean to do that. Was <laughs> so, he was he on something that day? Huh? Was he, on he was just night? feeling good. He feeling was warm, good. you know. He probably <laughs> had a drink or two, three, you know. He was just warm. He was feeling good. Mm. I just know he ain't mean to give me that chain, but <laughs> the idea and the sentiment of it meant a lot. Meant a lot to yeah. you. Rhapsody. Rhapsody is here, man. New Era <laughs> TV. The heavy hitter, we out. <laughs>